Hello and welcome to this Warhammer 40k Which 40k army do I choose video? Now, there's a lot of Warhammer 40k armies out there and since last year there have been a lot of codexes that have been updated, changed, tweaks uh, and in 6th edition you can have allies which are making a lot of appearances in gaming clubs especially so I decided to make this video showing what I consider when I collect a Warhammer 40k army. So first things first, you have to ask yourself, am I looking to be a painter slash artist or a gamer? If you answered painter slash artist, you are one of the lucky few who can focus on perhaps a single model from any of the armies. You may want to hone your skills on painting armour, or vehicles, or flesh. You may decide to create dioramas. You may even try and hone your skills to be entered into a Golden Daemon competition. You have the luxury of choosing any model from any army to just enjoy. If you answered Gamer, then finding the right army for you can be difficult. This is not to say that your skills as an artist is any less. However, it is important to be happy with an army, because it is no use painting your 100th Termagant or Cultist if you're just not enjoying it. So this is my guide on how I chose a Warhammer 40k army. You can use this guide for yourself, and I hope it helps. So let's begin. Number one, aesthetics. Now how does the army look? Games Workshop strives to create distinctive models. A large part of that is the model silhouette. Now, each army is different and you should be able to recognise the silhouette of an Eldar Guardian when compared to a Chaos Space Marine. It is this visual aspect that will immediately draw you in. Tyranids, for example, have huge behemoths. In contrast to this, the heavily armoured Space Marines too are a sight to behold on the table. However, there are a number of different factions. The red of the Blood Angels is extremely distinct and the dark blue of the Ultramarines are just two examples of a similar army just with different colour schemes. So you need to explore other variables too. Now number two is fluff. What do you decide? Good or evil? soon to be extinct or constantly expanding, the endless devourer or the deadly machine. The concept and history of each army is something that really stirs the hobbyist in me. Now, each race has a huge catalogue of archives and fictional accounts of heroism that could swing the choice between one army to another. Number three, the range of models. So. By now you're starting to think of a few armies that take your fancy. However, it is the range of models that really draws me in. There are army lists out there that, that do spam a lot of competitive models. Now, what I mean by this is that they will use the same vehicle or unit and multiply this as much as they can. But I prefer to use a varied list. If an army only has one real build, that is the only way to win. Well, examples of this is the Chaos Space Marines will spam a lot of Helldrakes, or there's always the Necron Air Force. Well, if that's the only real way to win, then that's not really fun for me. So what I'll do is tend to explore more options in the army. However, if there aren't, in the range of models as well as their rules, then that's not for me. Number four, codex rating. I don't like to rate codexes, however there are stronger ones out there than others. In 40k, there's a lot of rock, paper, scissors. There are different things that can take down a specific thing such as poison weapons or force weapons always beat monstrous creatures. 
Swarms and Hordes are great against Thunderhammer Storm Shield Terminators and Blasts literally annihilate the Swarms. Now something can be something else and most armies have that something to be better against others. However, if you play an army like Dark Elder and everyone else has an army that has more options, stronger units and always defeats you in battle unless they roll ones for everything in the game then it might be time to look around at stronger codexes and this will help you enjoy the gaming aspect more. Now finally after looking at how the model looks now, the, what's in the model range, the fluff and story, the rules and everything, you may have decided on an army. Now number five is Tester. By now you would have chosen an army's look, the fluff, the range of models out there, and how competitive and strong the lists are and the codexes. So now it's time to get the painting side of things, the hobbyist inside you who wants to just see what it's like to feel them in your hands, to paint them and just see what it looks like on the table. So you get yourself a tester. And what I mean by that, you, you buy yourself a box set of something small. It could be a small vehicle, a small unit of infantry, anything you like, but that just gives you the idea of, of what the army, the models feel like when painting and if you enjoy them. Now you can get great ideas on the internet, you can get colour schemes by typing on any search engine and you can get some ideas from great websites such as coolminis.com or Blue Table Painting to get great ideas to try them out. So there we have it then. That's just a few things that run across my mind when I'm thinking which 40k army do I want to collect next? A bit of history for me, I have 3,000 points of Grey Knights, 3,000 points of Tyranids, a couple of thousand points of Space Wolves, and 5,500 points of Eldar. So I've got a few, and each army appealed to me either by the way they looked, the colour scheme, or the way they played. So thank you for watching, please comment, share, like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas or would like to share how you choose your 40k armies, please comment below.